Good morning, everybody. I know our church council met before the service, so they're still making their way up from downstairs. So um, hopefully they get up before we uh, finish announcements. But since I do have some announcements, we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, after service today, we're going to have a blessing of the bikes. So we've got uh, Jimmy and some of his friends brought their motorcycles. So we're going to have a blessing after service. So anyone who wants to stick around for that after service, that would be fantastic. Uh, we have uh, kind of finalized some things with selling the parsonage. Um, and we need some help on May 18th and 19th. So that's like two weekends from now. We're going to clean out the basement and move everything into storage and the basement in the office area, move all of our stuff into storage so that when we sell it, all of the church stuff is out of that building. So we're going to start on May 18th at 9 a.m. We're going to get done as much as we can of moving everything into a storage facility. We're going to be building a storage shed to put it all in or putting up a storage shed, but we're not going to have that done in time. So we're going to rent a storage facility for a couple months to put it in. Um, or Terry maybe has a big storage thing. Anyway, there'll be a, some, some version of storage, but we do need help getting everything moved out. Um, so we'll start at 9 a.m. on the 18th. On the 19th, if there's anything left to do after service, we'll just hang around as many people as can, and we'll get done what we can after church on the 19th. That's all the announcements I'm aware of. Anything from the gathering? Yes, Terry. Okay, so um, during the pandemic, of course, we stopped shaking hands for the passing of the peace because everybody had to make some changes. Um, council's recommending that we can start doing all the things again. So if you want to get up and shake everybody's hand, please feel free to do that. I know we've tried to start that again in the past, and everyone like stayed in their seats and didn't get up. So it was like, okay. Um, so um, feel free to do that uh, today and moving into the future. Anything else? Birthdays and anniversaries this week. Gloria, happy birthday. Jimmy? Jimmy, happy birthday. Oh, you were just pointing to Jimmy. Oh, you have an anniversary. Happy anniversary to you and Jim. All right. 46 years. All right. <laughs> there you go. All right, I'm a terrible singer, so I'm not going to start us on the right note, but let's sing. I invite you now to rise as you are able and let us begin worshiping our Lord. God rules over all the nations of the earth. All are called to worship God Almighty. This one is God of our ancestors and our descendants. In Jesus, we are connected to one another in a vine of covenant. Bear and share the fruit of God's love, that we may proclaim a just world for all. You may be seated. Let us pray together. God of love, Jesus, the true vine, extends to connect the continents and oceans of this world. We recognize that we are immigrants from different places, small and large, with all nations under your dominion, no matter where we are on life's journey. God of all nations, we pray for the brokenness within our nation. We are sisters and brothers, and yet we struggle to find love with one another. 
Open our ears and our hearts to one another that we may live as you command us to love, even and especially those who differ from us. Give us courage to seek your perfect love, which casts out all fear. We offer our prayers to you in the name of Jesus Christ, our true vine. Amen. So I just realized something fun. Anyone who was here last week, does that sound very, very, very familiar? Apparently I sent Don the bulletin for last week instead of this week. So everything you see in the bulletin is basically not what I planned for today. But we're going to go ahead, so the places where there's parts back and forth, so you actually have them in front of you, we're going to go ahead and use those. The rest of it, I'll just announce it as we go so that, you know, the music is the actual music we're using and the uh, scriptures are the ones that I prepared to preach on and stuff like that. So we're just going to wing it today. Today is a wing it sort of day. What's that? Nothing better than that someday. So the first hymn that we're going to use is number four in the hymnal, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore You. And I will remind you that this hymn, uh, we're using the recording, and the recording really kind of bumps along on this one. So if you're singing it kind of slow and gentle, you're going to be about three beats behind everybody else. So you'll have to kind of pay attention to how fast this one goes. Number four, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore You. stay there. Okay. All right, so we'll move on then to Holy Communion. We celebrate Holy Communion in this church, uh, open to everybody, 
So uh, if you're online also and you would like to worship with us, uh, you can grab your bread or your wine um, from your kitchen and we'll bless those elements. We know that God doesn't exist just here in this building, but God exists everywhere. So we'll bless those elements wherever you're at um, and you can join in communion with us as well. Now I've been out with my back surgery now for, or my back, broken back for what, seven weeks? And I totally forgot the words of communion at the last uh, service. So I've said these for 25 years straight, same thing every Sunday, and I was going through and I couldn't remember them. So we'll see if I do better this time. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, poured out for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of of me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The gifts of God are given for the people of God. Today, when you receive each of the elements, if you would hold it in your hand until everyone has received the elements, and then we will take Holy Communion together as a group. So this is the bread of life given for you. the bread of life given for you. Wine's in the middle, yes, grape juice on the edge, or, no, grape juice on the edges, wine, grape juice in the middle, wine on the edges, oh my goodness, today, wow. This is the cup of promise shed for you.
And as the children go down to Sunday school, we'll sing together, Jesus Loves Me. My brain is just fried. Get the wrong bullet and so I don't know what I'm doing. At this time, we're going to collect up our prayers for later on in the worship service. So if you're watching the recording later in the week and you have prayer concerns, you can type those into the chat or the comments. If I get them in time for church today, I'll include them today. If you watch the recording later in the week, I check it at the end of the week. So every name that's listed, um, I do pray for. Please use first names only so we're not revealing anybody's private health info publicly. If you're here in the sanctuary, who and what are we praying for today? Mm -hmm.
Well, hallelujah. Okay, we'll continue to pray for Raj. We've prayed for him for months, but good to hear some good news. Yes. All right, anything else? Jimmy. Okay, Steve with cancer. I'm glad to hear he's getting better. Oh, that's hard. Yeah. All right, so we'll raise up Steve. Anything else? All right. We'll raise up those prayers a little later in the service, which gives time for anybody online to get theirs submitted in as well. Right now, we're going to read some scriptures. Our first one is Psalm 98. And uh, Psalm 98 is just a, a song of praise that... Uh, and it's a song encouraging us to praise God for all of the good things in the psalmist's words, all the good things that God has done for Israel and the Israelite people. For us, we pray for all the good things God has done for all of God's people. 98. Oh, sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm have gotten him the victory. The Lord has made known his victory. He has revealed his vindication in the sight of the nations. He has remembered his steadfast love and faithfulness to the house of Israel, and all the ends of the earth have seen the victory of our God. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Break into joyous song and sing praises. Sing praises to the Lord with the lyre, with the lyre and the sound of melody, with trumpets and the sound of horns. Make a joyful noise before the King, the Lord. Let the sea roar and all that fills it, the world and those who live in it. Let the floods clap their hands and the hills sing for joy at the presence of the Lord for he is coming to judge the earth. He will judge the world with righteousness and the people with equity. The word of the Lord. So we've been reading from the letter of, or the letters of um, John. Uh, so we're going to continue reading from the letters of John today. We're in 1 John. And, oh, come on here. There we go. First John chapter 5. We're going to start reading Hold on here. If I get to the right chapter, that'll help. We're going to start reading at the first verse, chapter 5, the first verse. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born of God, and everyone who loves the parent loves the child. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we obey the commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome, for whatever is born of God conquers the world. And this is the victory that conquers the world, our faith. Who is it that conquers the world but the one who believes that Jesus Christ is the Son of God? This is the one who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ, not with water only, but also with water and blood. And the Spirit is the one who testifies, for the Spirit is the truth. The word of the Lord. Our next hymn is, I believe it's number 319. Yes, 319. Sing them over again to me, wonderful words of life.
Our gospel reading for today comes from the writing of St. John. We're reading from the 15th chapter. And we are reading starting at verse 9. Now, I mentioned last week that this is part of the farewell discourse. That's important because it's important to know why Jesus is saying what he's saying. So in this passage, Jesus is giving his last sermon. He already knows he's going to be crucified. And the disciples have kind of an idea. They're not exactly sure what's going on, maybe, but they know something bad is coming. And so, as you can imagine, they've been following him around for three years. They've given up their lives and their livelihoods and their families and everything else. The idea that something bad is going to happen to their leader has them pretty stressed out. And so, Christ is saying these things in order to remind them that no matter what happens in this world, no matter what craziness comes, that God is always with them and that they always have opportunity to abide in God. And so as we read this, I want you to just notice, if you were here last week, you'll notice that we said the word love a lot last week and maybe you got sick of it because it just was like Jesus said, love, the love, 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 love. We're going to continue that this week. Jesus is still reminding the disciples how much God loves them, more than anything else, even life itself. So here's the reading. We're starting at the ninth verse of chapter 15. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love just as I have kept the Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, but to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if, I do, if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer because the servant does not know what the master is doing, but I have called you friends because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my father. You did not choose me, but I chose you and I appointed you to go and bear fruit fruit that will last, so that my Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. I am giving you these commands so that you might love one another. The Gospel of the Lord. So some people might say that I'm a slow learner, Hush, Tim. Some people might say that I'm a slow learner because, of course, having uh, been injured on my horse here a couple of months ago, instead of being smart and deciding I wasn't going to hang around with my horse anymore, I spent the weekend at a clinic playing with my horses. Um, so the good news is I wasn't riding. I'm not ready to ride yet, but I was on the ground and I did not get injured. Um, but horse clinics, in case you don't know, are not places where horses go to get shots. Nothing like that. A horse clinic is a place where you take your horse and you learn something about uh, how to work better with your horse. And I've been looking forward to this clinic for a really long time. Since before I broke my back, I had plans to attend this clinic. So there's nothing that was going to stop me. This clinic it was a liberty clinic. And so what we were learning is how to get your horse to listen to you and do what you say when you don't have a lead rope on it. So most of the time, I mean, I've been doing horses for almost 50 years, um, but most of the time if I want a horse to follow me or do what I've told it to do, I put a lead rope on its halter and I 
take it with me. And if it doesn't want to come, I yank on the halter till it does decide to come, and then I take it with me. That's what you do. Well, these liberty folks are kind of interesting. It's a, a, a way of training horses with no lead rope, where you train your horse in such a way that it wants to come with you. You train your horse in such a way that people that are really, really good at this can train their horses so that they can have their horse doing circles and spinning around out there and another one going through barrels and a figure eight over here and another one walking in circles around them and they're like magicians. They're just standing there pointing and doing things with their hands and all these horses are doing exactly what they're supposed to and no human is anywhere near them telling them what to do. So that's what liberty is and that's what I was trying to learn this weekend. I'm not very good at it. Um, I can get my horse to walk alongside me. That was about it after all of yesterday. But the gal who was leading this training put this idea of how we work with our horses at liberty into a Christian context. And she used these Bible verses that we read today about abiding in Christ. She said that the the relationship we want to create with our horse is about having that horse trust you enough, find you to be a place of safety and security enough that the horse chooses, even though it's got the whole world to run around in, that the horse chooses to be near you and chooses to do the things you ask of it. And so as the leader, your goal is to create a place where your horse can trust you enough and feel safe enough that even though they've got the whole world to run around in, they want to be by your side. Now, with horses, the way we do this is we make them anxious in other places, and then when they come by our side, we make them, you know, happy and, and feeling joyous and, and uh, quiet and calm by our side. So the analogy doesn't fit perfectly. But I believe that abiding in God's love is a lot like choosing to be by God's side in a similar way that my horse chooses to be by my side. Now, God doesn't need to make everything stressful out there. It's already stressful and anxious enough. But what God is for us is a place of safety and security. God is that place where no matter what happens, we are safe. We are comforted. We have God and God's community walking with us through whatever comes, and we have no need to protect ourselves. That's what abiding in God is all about. That's what all this love talk is all about. Jesus says he loves us so much, loves his friends so much that he would give his life for his friends. Now the word in Greek for friend is filieo, which is based on the same word in Greek for love, love or beloved, loved one. And so Christ is saying that all of God's created people are so precious, they are beloved ones. And because they are beloved ones, Christ will give everything for us. So because we all, every single created person of God, is a beloved one of Christ, Christ will give everything for us so that we can abide in Christ's safety. And there's nobody outside of that bubble of beloved ones. Think about your own family and your own children or someone that you love so deeply that you would give anything for them. That's the love that Christ promises for all of Christ's created people. Love so deeply that God will give anything for us so that we might choose to be by God's side. We might choose to abide in God's love. Even though we got the whole world to be out there, we might choose to be with God. 
And what does it mean to choose to be with God? Well, I'll go back to my horse analogy. My horse chooses to be with me when I have food in my hand. That's pretty much a guarantee all the time. But she's not there because she wants to be with me. She's there because she wants to be with the grain. My horse chooses to be with me when I have a lead rope on her, but it's because I'm yanking at her head, and she says, oh, that hurts. It's easier to be with you and not have that hurting. But when my horse chooses to be with me because she loves me, there's a different... Uh, different feeling about that because she chooses to do the things I've asked her to do. It's not because she was tricked there or bribed there or forced there, but rather she chooses to do the things I've asked her to do because she wants to be there and she's having fun. Abiding in Christ is similar for us. We abide in Christ when we choose to be with Christ and to do the things God wants us to do because it's a better place to be than anywhere else. And what is it that God asks of us? We're told in the scriptures today that God's commandments are not burdensome. They're not there to cause problems for us. They're not there to be difficult. But God's commandment is simply this, that we love one another with the same deep love that Christ has for us that we create beloved community so that when we are going through something difficult, when we do need a safe place of safety in finding Christ, we also find all of these other people who are here to support and strengthen us as well. And in creating that beloved community where each of us considers the other to be that beloved person for whom they would do anything, we create Christ again on this earth. We abide in God's love, and God abides in us. And so you can choose to do anything. You could choose to be anywhere. Christ says this to his disciples. You can choose to do anything. You can choose to be anywhere. But the safe place to be, the protected place to be, is abiding, standing next to Christ, abiding in God's love, and sharing God's love so that others might also find comfort, peace, and safety in a crazy, stressful world. Thanks be to God. Amen. Yeah. Say that again. Do they make women clinics? <laughs> You have no chance of understanding us, Jimmy, so. <laughs> so the women clinics are the bars where you go and you talk to the other men about all your problems, and then you still don't know anything more than you knew before. <laughs> All right, on that note, let's sing something. Hymn number 43, Love Divine, All Loves Excelling.
Loving Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for extending your love to all of your created people. We ask that you remind us to abide in your love and that you keep us safe and walk with us through this crazy life. We pray especially this day, Lord, for those who need your healing, and we give you thanks for partial recoveries, but we ask that you continue to give health and healing, hope and courage for Roger and for Steve. Today we also celebrate, Lord. We celebrate that the weather has gotten beautiful again and that we can be out and about in the world. We pray today for those who enjoy riding their motorcycles, Lord. We ask that you keep them safe and bless them. We ask that you make the other drivers on the road responsible and aware so that no one is injured. Lord, we pray this day in thanksgiving for Jim on his birthday. We ask for blessings upon him in this coming year. We pray for Gloria and Jim on their anniversary and again ask for blessings for them. All of these things we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. We praise God when we share the abundant fruit of God's love with this church so that we might also share that out into the world so that we might be the heart and the hands. We might be uh, the feet and the work of Christ in this world. And so if you feel uh, so inclined to participate in giving us an offering, there's a plate at the back of the sanctuary you can place offerings in as you leave. If you're joining us online and you would like to support our ministry, you can do so by mailing offerings to P.O. Box 165, Dale, Wisconsin, 54931. Even as those offerings make their way here, we dedicate them back to God's work so that we might be instruments of God's peace in our prayer of dedication. Dear God, holy vine grower, you are love. May the offerings we share today be a source of hope for the poor. Help us to live out your commandment to love others not just because we reach out to them as sisters and brothers, but also because, as our sisters and brothers, they reach out to us as well. Amen. Amen. 
And our closing hymn for today is number 78, Part in Peace. for the closing blessing. Just a reminder, maybe you hear outside, we've got some bikes pulling in. We're going to have a blessing of the bikes after the service, so come on out and join us um, after the service. Please rise for our closing blessing. We love because God first loved us, and we who love God must love our brothers and sisters also. This is the command, that we love one another. Amen.